Like something straight out of a storybook fairy tale, this colossal renaissance-themed, now-abandoned castle was surrounded by acres of lush rolling landscape and dates back to the 16th century and still stands proud today, towering over a small village in the heart of southern Poland. Witnessing this ornate spectacle in person solidifies why many people consider this to be one of the most beautiful castles in all of Poland. It was a literal dream come true for us to explore, especially as neither of us had thought that we would end up halfway across the world, thousands of miles from home, to behold such a majestic palace, especially one with such historical significance. First constructed back in the 16th century, the grandiose castle was built in the lower Sicilian voidership of Poland and stands as a true testament to the rich history and cultural heritage of that same geographic region. This video will aim to delve into the building's past, discover its origins, uncover its architectural significance, and explore the prominent figures that were associated with it. Originally built in the 1500s for a local and prominent von Rauick family, it would later fall under the ownership of a German royal physician and then being passed into the hands of the Jesuits before eventually being acquired by multi-millionaire Count Anton Alexander von Magnus in 1780. So it was under the Count's vision that the castle was spectacularly expanded and then fitted with tall circular stone follies on each end, one rising significantly stories taller than the other, almost as if it's reaching for the heavens above. It was also during the same time period that the luxurious palace had been visited by two kings of Prussia and even the President of the United States, John Quincy Adams. The palace had always been a residence for various noble families and dignitaries, adding to its historical significance. Throughout its history, it had often been associated with several other prominent figures who had left an inevitable mark on its legacy. Notable individuals such as the von Annerberg family, who were also very influential in the development and expansion of the palace, and also played a pivotal role in shaping its history. Look at this ballroom. This is one of my favorite rooms in this whole place. Now, if that isn't grandiose, these look like minotaurs or something. They're like half human, half beast. Or I guess a third human, a third beast, and a third angel. Or I don't know, something like that. But look at the dragon or eagle again up there and all this beautiful plaster work all the way throughout this whole room there's the balcony up there oh, that's so amazing it's like a group of people hanging out and then the Stanley Cup up there. This thing is incredible. It's got like a wood base. See some serious damage getting in up there. Lots of decay up there. There's actually another figure up there in the corner on each end of the um, balcony. See, there's another one up there, too. It was not until the late 19th century that the stately structure gained its current look. Sadly ravaged by a fire in 1870, a large majority of the interior was built in a flourish of breathtaking neo-baroque architectural elements, and then later, throughout the pre-depression era of the 1920s, both classical and Renaissance revival elements were also added to the building's facade. Given the fate of many of the region's other notable historic properties, the castle miraculously survived World War II with little sustained damage and would later go on to serve as an agricultural school during the years of communism. But having survived both the war and communist era relatively unscathed, the castle fared less well following Poland's political transition. Although Prince Charles was reputed to have expressed a serious interest in restoring the castle to its former glory, those plans fell through and instead the palace gradually fell into disrepair and ruin. 
In 2005, it was ultimately sold to an Irish-based development group for the reported price of 20 million Polish zloty, or that would be 5 million US dollars. Ambitious their vision was, plans to turn it into a luxurious hotel and prestigious golf club failed to ever materialize, and both decay and dereliction eventually set in. Even worse, over the course of time, thieves continually broke in, stripping it of many of its original fixtures and decorative features. Although the castle sold again in 2010, with the crippling decrease in value of the Polish Lottie currency continuing to plague the country's economy, unfortunately, there have been little restoration efforts in recent years. Despite all of this, the breathtaking beauty will forever remain known for its architectural grandeur and for its unique blend of classical, Gothic, Renaissance, and Baroque style designs. Here is the balcony to the big ballroom. So there used to be three big chandeliers. There's only one left now. Look at these really big windows that let in light. It's all marble. Yeah, it's marble. You can see the detail is just floor to ceiling in this place. It's starting to decay really bad in here. The castle's intricately designed facade ornate interior plaster work, complex hand-carved woodwork, dark oak-lined corridors, and sprawling outdoor gardens still reflect the opulence and elegance of the bygone era. The architectural significance of the castle has made it a prominent landmark in the region, attracting visitors and photographers from all corners of the world. So it looks like over here, the ceiling has collapsed. So this is the other side of the ballroom. See the ceiling starting to collapse over here. Let's check this out. So that's the skylights for down there in the library. But yeah, this is starting to fall apart up here. Cherubs holding something. Interesting wallpaper. So this room isn't nearly as extraordinary as the other one, but there is one next door. Pretty sweet. Check out this room. Very photogenic, the way it's all curved. And the pillars. Got the design on the ceiling. It still has the chandelier. Let's check out some of the details. It's mind-blowing that they're still in this good a shape. Part of this building's collapsing already, which I'll show you eventually. The building's romantic chateau vibe and splendid curb appeal has also made it a top choice for filmmakers, with the palace appearing in several Polish films, such as the 2005 horror flick Legenda and the 2021 hit drama movie Bridget Bardot Forever. Today, 
the once pride and joy of the southern Poland region is scarred, molded, battered, decayed, and even collapsed. Most of the rooms that once held priceless antique furnishings and rare imported decor now sit empty and lonely. The walls that once held expensive oil paintings and unique tapestries are now covered in dust, cracks, and cobwebs. But despite it being a mere shell of its former self, the current owners are working tirelessly to help preserve the behemoth structure. It has undergone extensive preservation efforts to maintain its historical integrity. Various organizations and individuals have been involved in safeguarding the castle and its surrounding grounds, ensuring that its architectural and cultural heritage is upheld for future generations to appreciate and cherish for years to come. So from this room, it leads into another, a small room, but it's got some great plaster details, most likely an original chandelier up there. It's a weird shaped room, as you can see the ceiling. <laughs> it is an odd shape. Then it's got the uh, heater over here. It's like um, ceramic, a ceramic heater of some sort. It's got like fruits on it. Yes. Yeah, That's a wild. And that's how they heated these rooms back in the day. Don't forget this palace was built in 1871. Although the property dates back to 1520, 16th century. <laughs> Mind blowing. Great plaster work up there. So there's two really big staircases in here. This one leads to the actual back door, which is the door that the caretaker let us in right down those steps. If you see here, they have pieces of trees holding up the ceiling from collapsing. This is very common that I've seen throughout France. Italy, really all of the European spots I've seen so far. If the ceilings collapse in, they use big pieces of trees and prop it up to hold it up. Staircase is wrapped in old woodwork. It's probably original to this building. As we go behind the staircase, there's like a collapsed room over here where the third floor collapsed, which then made the second floor collapse. Some nice arched windows right here. And then over here is the room I was just talking about. So you can see, I'm on the second floor, which collapsed down to the first floor. And then so did the third floor collapsed as well. I was trying to photograph this room a little bit ago and the lighting was horrible. And it looks a lot better right now, so I'm gonna grab a quick photo. We have two big skylights right here. This was like the library. I used to have this place locked up really good. It's alarmed. The guy lets you in. 
So this is the library. Gosh, this woodwork is just amazing. If we come through here, there's even more amazing woodwork. Like this little arched doorway here. That leads to another nook hideout. This little corner area is cool. Little circle. forestry wallpaper and then like look at the details going all the way around of all the animals elk and deer rams looks like a fox of some sorts just amazing the wildlife sculpted that's incredible This must have been the hunting room. As you can see more when you come through here too. Going all the way around the room is hand carved, um, sculpted depictions of hunting and horseback riding and wildlife. And look at that. Just amazing stuff. Dudes on horses and stuff up there. So once you step back out here, you can see the woodworks really starting to decay up at the ceiling. You have some water damage over here. Again, coming in from the ceiling. Stripping where that chandelier used to be. You can see all the damage that the water's causing. Over here, there's a complete hole in the roof. Let's go check out this grand staircase. It's one of the better photographs of this entire place. Have this really big stained glass arch window shining onto this beautiful staircase. So you can see there probably used to be a bunch of murals or paintings hanging on the walls around the staircase. Look at the design and the woodwork. And then there's a bunch of detail on the ceiling as well. One of the best staircases that I've ever photographed. I think the best staircase I ever photographed was an abandoned hospital down in Virginia. I'll flash that photo up now. It's probably my favorite staircase. Either that or the staircase that I found in Portugal. Uh, me and my friend were in Portugal a few years ago and we found this palace, and at the time, I don't think, or we don't know anyone else who photographed it before us. 
and I was actually walking down the street and I asked my buddy, what do you think about this building? And he said, we can't check every building and we have to keep it moving. And then I looked in the mail slot on the front door and I seen probably the most incredible staircase that I ever photographed. Definitely in the top two of my favorites. Um, but I would actually probably say that's between that one and the abandoned hospital in Virginia, they're my two favorite staircases I ever photographed. Um, but this one is up there. So here's the stained glass. It has a pH in the center of it. Look at all the cobwebs. It's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna take a photo because this thing is covered in cobwebs, but they're not picking up on video that well. Unfortunately, some of the original castle ended up burning down. So most of what you're seeing now was rebuilt in 1871. So like all this woodwork and most of everything that you're seeing was all from 1871. Hundred and fifty years old. Look at these wood carved columns, for example. Oh man, look at the details up there. Wild. So this property has been sitting abandoned for over 30 years now and it's fallen into such disrepair. Look at these faces. Bright sun. So right now, as, uh, I think last year, maybe two years ago, they listed this place for sale for 6.7 million not dollars though. Zloty. Which is Polish money. 6.7 Zloty. This garage area. This is like where they would pull in. And park. These stone columns in here. So as we leave the grand staircase area, there's like this smaller looking ballroom type area right here. Another just immaculate room. Like truly one of the best rooms I've ever photographed. I mean, look at this thing. The design work is unbelievable in here. The details around the doorways. As you go around the room, some of the murals are gone, decaying, falling off the wall. 
that one's completely gone. And then so is all the detail work above the doorway, but the rest of the room is still in really great shape. So there must be a lot of moisture on that wall. Spaces and areas where the heaters would have gone. <laughs> it looks almost new. Let's see what's through here. All the floors are uneven too. Oh, that's cool. This looks like a Greek god up there. Is that like Hercules or something? That's wild. And you got another one over here too. More amazing plaster work, of course. We got another Hercules over here. Painted door. Looks like it's locked. No, it's nailed shut. <laughs> I'm not getting through there. So here's another room right off of the main entrance staircase. This one's decaying really bad. Used to have a nice big circle dome up there. They started to take up all the floor. This one's decaying really bad, but here's all the wood for the floor. So I'd imagine they're all saving this. It's reusable. I have to clean it up a little bit, but it's probably why they're saving it, hoping to reuse it at one point. It looks like they started renovations in here maybe years ago, but I couldn't imagine how much money it would cost to renovate this property. I mean, I'd imagine, uh, probably several million dollars, but I have no clue. It needs a lot, a lot of work. In conclusion, the history of this magnificent palace is a woven tapestry of architectural awe, splendid, noble lineage, and cultural significance. As a symbol of the region's rich heritage, the palace continues to stand tall as a testament to the enduring legacy of its past. Its historical journey is a true reflection of the rich tapestry of Polish history and the efforts to preserve its cultural heritage for generations to come. Unfortunately, that will bring us to the conclusion of today's video on the massive abandoned fairy tale castle in Poland. We truly hope that you guys all enjoyed the video, especially as the castle was so big that it ended up taking us nearly a day and a half to film and document everything, not to mention the amount of zloty that we had to fork over to the whiskey-loving caretaker. For more photographs from the castle and from our other abandoned locations, make sure you check out our website at abandonedcentral.com. Also, don't forget, subscribe to Abandoned Central on YouTube so that you get all the latest videos. And one more important thing, if you want to help support us in creating these videos, please consider donating by clicking the super thanks link next to the download icon. Any amount is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, friends.